Hello everyone, today I'm going to be continuing the reading of Blair Wilson's second book by Jennifer Castle. Chapter 6. It's just pizza. I held the box in my lap, flipping through my newly created recipe cards as Dad drove me and Becca to school. Tell me what you ended up with, Dad said. I pulled the first card out and read it. Forest giant fingers. Oven fried green beans, Dad said. Right? Right, I answered. It's the best way to eat a green bean. Dad nodded. Next. Maple bacon roasted carrots. Dad smacked his lips. Mmm, maple bacon. Anything sounds delicious. Definitely. Next is spinach and potato stars, I said. Those are even better when they're shaped like bugs, Beckett offered from the back seat. I'll make a note of that, I said. Then I looked at Dad and shook my head. I flipped to the next card. Veggie rainbow kebabs with cloud sauce. Cloud sauce? Dad asked. Ranch dressing, I answered. With a clever name, Dad said. I pulled out the last card. And finally, broccoli cheddar hug in a bowl. Why don't you just call it soup? Beckett asked. Because this is the ultimate comfort food, and it's too comforting to just call it soup, I explained. But you can't even eat that anymore, Beckett answered, or the ranch dressing. I turned to look at Beckett in the back seat. No, but these are my all-time favorites, I said. I'm pretty sure Abby and the other kids will like them. I turned around and looked at Dad. Maybe Mom would help me experiment with a non-dairy version of the cheddar soup. Dad reached over and squeezed my shoulder. I'm sure she would. I am proud of you, honey. You've done a great job learning to cook and eat without dairy. Thanks, I sighed. I wanted to tell Dad that it was still kind of hard, especially at school, but Beckett was leaning forward, peering into the shoebox in my lap. How many of those cards are in there? He asked. I made five copies of each recipe. Hopefully 25 kids like Abby will try them. We'll know soon enough, Dad said, pulling into the Helping Hands parking lot. I'd wanted to drop the cards off today, before the food pantry distribution hours tomorrow. That way, kids could take the cards home when they came to get groceries for the week. Dad pulled up in front of the entrance, and I hopped out. Eileen met me outside the front door. Wowza, Blair, she said as I handed her the box. I'd covered it with green paper and drawn vines and vegetables all over it, so it looked like a garden. On top of the box, I'd written, Hey kids, cook up some fun with fresh veggies. Thank you so much, Eileen added. Abby and the other kids are going to love this. I hope so, I said, climbing back into the car. As we headed for school, I asked Dad if he thought the recipe card should be my official project for the Community Service Challenge. I'm supposed to find something that's important and interesting to me, I explained. Well, this does seem to fit that bill, Dad said. True, but I'm not sure it's big enough, Dad smiled. Well, I guess it depends on what you mean by big, he said. You went to the center to donate clothes and ended up creating these recipe cards. Kat went to the center with you and she ended up arranging for Pleasant View Farm to donate produce to the pantry every week. So you started a chain reaction of helping. That seems big to me. I thought about what Marco had said at the Maison House. Something small can become something big. Would this little box of cards become something big enough for my community service challenge project? Okay, my friends, Miss Lewis called. Line up for lunch. It was the first pizza Friday of the year, and I'd been dreading it ever since the first Monday Madness snack episode. I had to eat something different, and this time I'd be in the cafeteria in front of the whole school. Maybe Miss Lewis would let me eat in the classroom, I said to Thea. Or I could go to the nurse's office. Nope, Thea said matter-of-factly. 
There's just going to be another pizza Friday next month, and then another, and another. Better to get this over with. I went to my cubby and grabbed my lunchbox. I knew I'd be the only one who had brought lunch from home. Everybody got pizza on Friday. It was the best day of the month, or used to be. It's still Pizza Friday, I told myself as I walked down the hall with my friends. Just a new version for me. Since I didn't have to go through the cafeteria food line, I was the first one of my friends to sit down at our usual table. Third on the right, next to the window. I started unpacking my lunchbox. Sabrina plopped her tray onto the table and slid into the seat across from me. The pizza on the plate smelled so, so good. I tried not to look at it as I opened the container I'd brought. What's in there? Sabrina asked. My own personal dairy-free pizza, I replied. Mom and I made the crust last night and baked it this morning. She packed it so it would stay warm. We'd done some experimenting and found a kind of soy cheese that tasted melty, gooey good. The sauce was made with tomatoes we'd grown on the farm. The pepperoni was from one of the meat suppliers we used for the restaurant. Anything you and your mom make is amazing, Sabrina said. Your mini pizza is adorable, Amadi said as she sank down next to me. I wish our pizza had pepperoni on it, Rosie added as she settled into her seat. I took a bite of my little pizza just as two girls from another class walked past our table. Since when do you bring your own pizza on Fridays, Blair? One of them asked. I blushed a deep red. Just like on Mondays, it felt like the room was suddenly quiet and everyone was staring at me. Thea slammed her tray down next to me and crossed her arms in front of her chest. Blair brings her own pizza. Is that a problem? She took a step towards the girl and they hurried away, looking sorry they asked. I started laughing. Thanks, cafeteria guard dog, I told Thea as she sat down. Woof, woof, any time, Thea said with a grin. I mean, seriously, it's just pizza, and it's not like you're the only one with food stuff to deal with. She pointed over at the nut-free table, where kids who had nut allergies sat to make sure they weren't exposed to anything that could make them sick. You're right, I said. Being around other people eating dairy isn't dangerous for me. I was glad I didn't have to sit at a separate table without my friends. There were plenty of people who had it worse than me in the foods you can't eat department. Some kids could get really sick, like rush to the hospital sick, if they accidentally ate something with nuts in it. If I ate dairy, I'd get some pretty bad stomach cramps, but that wasn't the same thing. Eli walked past our table, holding his tray, scanning the room for a place to sit. He found an empty table in the corner and sat down by himself. He's done that every day this week, Amadi whispered. It's like he doesn't even want to try to make friends. We should invite him to sit with us, I suggested, climbing out of my seat. That's nice of you, Blair, Rose said. Mighty people person to the rescue, Thea added. I noticed that Eli's t-shirt said, guess what, with a picture of a chicken and an arrow pointing to its rear end. It took me a second to figure it out. Guess what, chicken butt? I giggled. Eli had a good sense of humor in there somewhere. Hey, I said with a little wave. Mmm, Eli replied, chewing his pizza. When he swallowed and said, what's up? Do you want to come sit with us? Eli peered over at our table, where my friends were pretending not to look at him, even though it was totally obvious they were looking at him. No, thanks. I'm good. Okay, then can I sit here for a minute? Eli just shrugged. I sat down. So, what do you think of Bluefield so far? I asked. I haven't seen much yet, he mumbled, looking up at me for only a second, then back down at his pizza. My mom and I have been busy unpacking, but mountains, yeah, lots of woods and farms, cool. I sat up straighter. I live on a farm. My family owns Pleasant View Farm. 
Have you heard of it? Eli shook his head. We'll have a booth at the Blue Field Harvest Festival tomorrow. You should come visit us there. There's food, crafts, music, and a farmer's market. They close off Main Street, and the library runs a used book sale. There's even a bouncy house and pony rides. Pony rides, Eli said. Okay, maybe that's not your style, I said with a laugh. But the bicycle shop has a booth right by the rail trail, and you can get your bike tuned up for free. The festival's a great way to check out all the things to do around here. Bluefield Harvest Festival, Eli said. Got it. He started eating again, and I kept talking. We'll have some of our produce for sale, I added. We grow food on the farm, and my mom's the chef at our restaurant. My grandpa runs a bed and breakfast in our house, and my dad just renovated an old barn for big events like weddings. I helped. We have chickens and a goat and a lamb. I just made them pajamas. He raised an eyebrow. Pajamas? You kind of have to see it to get how awesome it was. If you go to the blog on our farm website, there's a video. Now Eli put down his pizza and his eyes looked bright and excited. You make videos? Sometimes. Why? I make them too. Like, all the time. I started making them with my... Eli stopped and looked at someone behind me. It was Thea. Hi guys, can I join you? Um, I'm done. Eli said. He stood up, shoving the last of his pizza in his mouth, then grabbed his tray and left without another word. Sorry, Thea said to me. It looked like you guys were actually talking, so I came over to say hi. We were talking, I said. He likes to make videos with... Well, that's all I know, I shrugged. Thea smiled. Hey, you found out something about the mysterious Eli. Leave it to Blair. Want to get a popsicle, she asked. For sure, Thea and I were both allowed to get dessert on Fridays. Mom and I had talked about the snacks I could buy, and fruit popsicles were totally safe for me to eat. As we joined the others at the ice cream freezer, Thea and I both grabbed a strawberry popsicle. I declare, Thea said dramatically, waving her popsicle like a wand, that Pizza Fridays is to be hereby known as Popsicle Friday. Deal, I said, and we touched our popsicles together. I looked back to see Eli heading out the door to recess. He would seemed so excited when we were talking about videos. What was he doing? What was he going to say before Thea came over? Okay, so that is the end of chapter six. So another great chapter in Blair's book. So we'll have to wait to find out what kind of videos Eli likes to make. Hopefully we'll find out in the next chapter. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.